Senator Dianne Feinstein's daughter is now claiming the California Democrat is a victim of financial elder abuse. Court filings show that Catherine Feinstein, speaking on behalf of her mother under limited power of attorney, alleges that the senator is a victim of senior mistreatment. This is according to a new report in the San Francisco Gate. Now, Catherine has accused co-trustees of committing financial elder abuse against the 90-year-old in the name of her late husband, Richard Bloom. Their attorney called the filing unconscionable, telling the San Francisco Gate that, quote, the trustees have acted ethically and appropriately at all times. The same cannot be said for Catherine. Senate Democrats are reportedly worried about Feinstein, apparently after she was, uh, especially rather after she was hospitalized again last week for falling in her home. They cannot afford to lose any votes in the busy legislative schedule this fall, including voting to fund the government to avoid a shutdown and a slew of judicial nominations to approve. Feinstein's health kept her from Washington for a few weeks earlier this year, ramping up calls for her to exit her post early. But as of June 1st, she has not missed any votes. So this dispute is a kind of interpersonal family dispute um, involving trust dis distributions from right. her late husband's trust. There are children from various marriages who are contesting whether or not the distributions are favoring his biological children versus other children in the family. And so th that is not political. Like what we discussed with the blind side yesterday. <laughs> Sure, like yeah. the, the the multi-millionaire right. version of but the blind side. What, what you mean is it's it's not a yes, it's not political. This is a common thing in mixed families with a lot of money. With a lot of money. The who the will, you know, it's it's even like a trope from from fiction, right? Hundred percent. Oh, the secret will. There's a new will that has. hundred. So that's all normal. It's giving succession. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But but she's in the, in the context not, of that dispute. How can she be? in the U.S. Senate representing the most populous state in the country at a time where she, she's, she's not even capable of making her own financial decisions anymore. Right. So this is, this is the, the argument that her daughter is making is that some of the decisions that have been made with respect to the trust are invalid because Feinstein's being exploited and she she's can be exploited competent. because she's older and not competent. That she, oh. you know, that her age is being exploited in the context of these financial dealings. So the obvious implication is, of course, how can that be the case? If you are being able to be exploited in this way, how do you have your wits about you enough to act as a senator in the United, in the United States Senate? Now, as we talked about previously, Democrats aren't being completely ridiculous about this. I don't think it's that they desperately want Feinstein to be in charge still. They are just stuck in a, logis like in a, in a logistical hole where they can't figure out how to get her, get, get a Democrat to replace her on committees necessary to make the judicial appointments that right. she's in the position to make they if they replace on that her. committee in the first place. That's where the negligence lies. They should have lies. stopped her from running for re-election last cycle. Correct. Because she's ancient. Correct. And, and, and Nancy Pelosi and everyone say, oh, but it's her, it's, she can, only she gets to decide when she steps aside. Yes. And not just because she's ancient, though, but because for years, since long before the last, the last election, there have been claims of her having failing health and mental competency. So what is going on with Democratic Party leadership to get us in this position? I think this is the kind of thing where heads should really be rolling and accountability should be front and center, but that's not the case. So now Democrats are in this position. They basically just have to cross their fingers and hope and pray that Feinstein can make it through. Um, but I, I, it is also just from an optics perspective, a very confusing why her daughter would put her mom in the situation where now she has to defend against these accusations that she is vulnerable to elder abuse because she's prioritizing her trust distributions from her wealthy stepfather, deceased stepfather, um, over the kind of politics of her mother having integrity in her position as a senator. This is why people, many people think, feel like government is the least accountable um, um, apparatus of all. Like she, if she was, I, I don't believe she, if she was like a CEO of a company, the board would remove her by now, right? If she was, you, you wouldn't, in, in no arrangement would you let, you wouldn't still be letting this person drive you to work. You wouldn't, like, in, in no other sort of scheme would she still have power and authority and anything. But because she is in U.S. Congress, there's nothing you can do about it. She's, she's in the unaccountable well, yes, Senate. Yes, yes. But it's also because we have a Congress that is so 
partisan and divisive. Yeah. I think in a different era of American history, you might have had a gentleman's agreement to say, okay, we're going to let you have your committee postings again with wh yeah. whoever re replaces her. We're not going to block your judicial appointments. This, this tenor that we have had recently where everything that happens is gridlocked and contested is a relatively new phenomenon. So, you know, should there be, you know, should the, the Senate in the light of this situation and Republicans understanding that they could be in this situation themselves, try to pass a rule change where there is some um, grandfathered in entitlement to staying to. You gotta wait for the Republicans to have someone going senile on their side and then well, do some kind of swap. They I'm might sure not that have would, to wait I'm very sure long. It would just be a matter of time. With the, the Mitch McConnell glitch that just happened. You, you might not have to the wait Mitch that long. Glitch? The Mitch glitch? I mean, it, it's horrible. I mean, it's not. I know. It sounds like we're making fun of old people, which I, I'm always accused of, like, Sounding like I hate the elderly or something. I don't. I love my grandparents, but it, this is this is cruel and wrong. To it's cruel and wrong for them and cruel yeah. and wrong for our society to give so much power to people who are no longer competent. Yes, and I suspect, frankly, that everybody involved, including Feinstein herself, would prefer not to be in this position. As she's yeah. being tapped on the shoulder and told I mean, how to vote. She chose to run for re-election. When, when was it? It was um, twenty. Uh, was it 2016, 2018? It was 2018? It was relatively be... recently. I, I feel like it was... <laughs> it had um, to be 28. It couldn't have been... Well, it couldn't have been 2016 or else you'd be done. It's six-year terms, right? It was 2018? It was 2018. Yeah. It was 2018. And there was... A lot of concern. ...rumor at the time that she was not fit even all those years ago. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I do... Given the posture of Congress, there's no way they're going to let this is a this is a boon for Republicans who, of course, have been really winning the race in terms of judicial appointments. Um, the Intercept back in 2018, when I was working there, did a rundown where they were trying to um, assess why it is how it was that Donald Trump was really appointing a uh, unprecedented a historical number of federal judges, and what they part of the analysis revealed is that Republican judges very wisely and strategically tend to take senior status where right. uh, you continue to take a, yeah. a, a diminished caseload, but you're still technically a judge during Republican administration, so they, they will be replaced by a Republican leader. Democrats just go until their personal life dictates they want to retire or their health or their lives or whatever. Well, that was the story at the Supreme Court level. A hundred percent. There was just no strategy happening on the Democrat side whatsoever. And by the way, you don't have to retire. You just go on senior status. You can still keep working. But Democrats, you know, it's hashtag it's her turn. It's the Ruth Bader Ginsburg of it all. So, you know, I, I can understand why Republicans, having played the game so smartly, would not want to go and say, oh, we're going to protect your ability to keep your seat in the judiciary. Well, for, and for a long committee. time, the Republicans did not play the judiciary game smartly. Uh, you know, there was a long history throughout the um, 60s, 70s, 80s, mm. 90s of Republican presidents appointing just judges and, the, and Supreme Court justices who ended up like being very liberal. Uh, that happened over and over and over again. And finally, like conservative activist groups said, okay, Stop doing that. Here's a list of people we're okay with you appointing. There was yeah. like the Harriet Myers turning point, yeah, where well, George Bush's <laughs> own uh, own conservatives, like you know, network, turned on him and said, "Stop it! Stop! It, it, Only well, people we say is okay." And then from then on, it wasn't like Bush was choosing people who were liberal or progressive, but people with exposure to life and case law and the horrible injustices that are uh, Souter was put picked upon. by, uh, the, the by a Republican. Liberta uh, the civil libertarians on the... Earl Warren was picked by Eisenhower. I mean, there's... There's so many civil libertarian issues that are arising in the courts that people naturally over time tend to evolve in a leftward direction when you're exposed to the reality of well, injustice in the world. So what that. ended up having to happen is you have organizations like the Federalist Society form that find some, some people with um, ideologies that are fixed extra legal, not really based on precedent, but are purely based outside of law and ideolo ideological. And that's why you do get people like Amy Comey Barrett, who from a pure qualifications perspective, from a traditional perspective, I'm not saying that you should have to go to these kind of Ivy League schools and whatnot, but in terms of the number of years that she served as a judge, her basic academic qualifications, and on and on down the list, was widely outside of the kind of choices that are normally found in the Supreme Court. But when you are choosing based on these very narrow, like you, you can never have an evolution in your views, you can never 
have an organic desire to have some of these civil liberty protections that the privacy rights that the court has found in the past, then you're going to end up with less qualified candidates. And that's what you've, you've, you're increasingly seeing on the Supreme Court on the on the right. But that's their choice. They're allowed to do it. Amy Comey Baird is a, a duly uh, confirmed a uh, member of the Supreme Court, but that's that's the way the game has been played now. Yeah, the, everybody is playing the game a little bit. Republicans certainly stepped up their game to actually achieve some conservative policies, which is what their voters want, and they finally figured that out. Now Dobbs is overturned, and the Republican that's Party is going to have to wanted. contend well, with the political consequences the point of, of that but the one. point of politics is to get policy you want, not just to— Through know. the courts? Because historically, Republicans have said that, that those activist courts and making policy with the courts is exactly why well, they right. didn't. Well, want you know, there's a sincere. The they don't think that abortion rights are actually it's under a originalist construction are actually yeah I in know the Constitution. <laughs> so I I can't see them in there either, regardless of what one thinks about the subject. But more rising right after this.